Hello and welcome to the QA Underground. Today we're going to be talking about contract testing and how we can integrate contract testing into our current API testing suite. First thing we're going to talk about real quick is why we would use contract testing, right? So really contract testing fits in where we're needing to validate the communications between two services, such as a web front end and a client API. So in a normal situation with API testing, we have a web front end that's sending a request to a client API and that client API responds with the data that the web front end requested. So there are multiple ways of testing this scenario, right? We can use the integration test or end-to-end -end test or something similar to that. The problem with integration tests is that they're very expensive and slow and sometimes flaky. And really the benefits of using contract testing is really to minimize that flakiness, uh, add reliability and get a faster result. So what is contract testing? So when I'm talking about contract testing, it's commonly referred to as the contract between a consumer and provider. Contract testing really utilizes the concept of having a consumer and a provider. And that consumer in our example here would be our web front end and our provider would be our client API. Now we can utilize a contract testing tool called PACT, which is an open source tool that is available in several different languages. Uh, where it allows us to really create a contract out of that request and response. So that middle layer, that interaction or integration between the consumer and the provider. Contract testing really ensures two services can communicate with each other without the need of integration testing. So if we remember integration testing can be very expensive, can be very slow and can require a large amount of effort to implement. So what are some of the benefits of contract testing? Contract testing is fast, it's reliable, and it relieves issues with version control. So let's say for example, we have changes to our request model or our response model. With contract testing, you can really go back to versions that were working previously and verify them against the current working group. So how do we go about implementing contract testing using the PAC tool? You really start with the consumer tests. So the consumer tests are where you will set up your ex expected requests and your expected response. And when you set this up, you will actually set up a mocked provider. So we're gonna actually mock that provider service so that client API will be mocked by us and we'll actually create an interaction that will then set up the expected request and the expected response that the consumer is expecting. Then we'll send an actual request to the mock provider and once the mock provider receives it, it'll verify that request against the expected request. If all those checks and the verification passes, we'll then generate a contract that includes the expected request and expected response that we set up within that interaction. We'll walk through setting up consumer tests and the code that involves. So the first thing we do is obviously we set up our mock provider. So this is utilizing the packed tool and in here, we set up our consumer name, our provider name, what port we're gonna be running our mock provider on. We also need to define where we're gonna be storing our pack logs. So anytime that we send a request or an interact or a request to the mock provider, it will log the interactions that are stored between the mock provider and the consumer. And that's really where we want to store our pack logs. The next thing we set up is actually where the contract will be stored after all the checks are passed. So we need to set up a directory that'll store our packed contracts. So the next thing we need to do is set up our interactions. And it's very simple. So basically we set up where we run our provider that, that const that we set up previously utilizing the packed tool. We now run setup on that. And we also add an interaction to that. And the interaction is basically the request that we are gonna be sending to the mock provider. So we tell it what the expected request will be. So in this case, we're gonna be sending a post to the path test. After we have set up our request, then we set up uh, what response we're expecting back from the mock provider. So in this case, we're expecting a status of 200 and a content type of application JSON. Inside that, we also have a body that we're expecting. We're expecting two parameters come back within app info. Next is the actual request we're gonna be sending to the mock provider. So this is where we're gonna be targeting that mock provider URI, and then we're gonna be sending an actual body request to the mock provider to be validated. The next step is we actually run a verification after we've sent the real request to the mock provider. 
And that mock provider will then verify again that it matches the expected request that we set up in our interaction. If it matches, then it'll move to the finalized step and will generate the contract. If it fails, no contract will be generated. After our contract is generated, then we need to upload it to what's called a pack broker. A pack broker is really where we store all of our contracts across all the services. This is the location that the provider test will target to consume the contract for its own tests. Moving on to provider tests. So the other half of contract testing is the provider side. So this is the client API side. And really it's very similar to how the consumer tests are set up, but much simpler. So in this case, we don't have to run a mock, we don't have to mock the consumer. We really are gonna utilize that contract that's generated by the consumer as our consumer that's sending the request. So the things that we need to set up inside the provider options are provider name, set up provider base URL. So what is our base URL for our provider? Then we need to target the pack broker URL and target the specific consumer contract that was generated during the consumer test. And then we need to publish our verification results after we're done. So once we run and consume the contract into our provider test, we run our verification on our, on our contract. Once that's either passed or failed, we'll then publish that result, those results back to the pack broker and the pack broker will actually allow you to query which contracts have passed verification with the provider. So our provider test, again, is extremely simple when compared to the consumer test. We only, again, we set up what our provider name is, what's our base URL, not including the path, what our pack broker URL is, so where our contracts are stored, and then we can pass along our consumer version, which is the version of the contract that we're looking for, or our, and then also pass a publish verification result. And we're gonna set that to true because we want it to publish to the pack broker the result of the verification. Once that is all set up and our options are set up for our provider test, we then run the verifier and pass those options to it. After all is said and done and the, the results have been published back to the pack broker, this is an example of what the pack broker would look like. So in this scenario, we have a verified consumer contract that's been verified by the provider. The benefits of using contract testing is mainly that you can save a lot of time and effort into getting fast and reliable tests when compared to integration tests that may take a lot of effort to set up and be overall flaky and slow in, in its results. I wanna thank everybody for joining us during this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. I hope you join us in our future videos.